Hi everyone, in this video we are going to learn how to develop native Android widgets using React Native. Widgets are an essential part of an Android platform and they allow users to access important information and interact with apps right from their home screen. In this example we are going to use the old code uh, that we have used for iOS also. Please make sure to check the previous video to get full and a clear idea about what we are going to do here. So let's get started. We are going to use the old project code that we have used for iOS where we are going to fetch a currency converter uh, exchange rate where using the API layer and then uh, you need to pass your access key uh, for that and we are going to convert this and then the result will be showing inside the widget itself. We are going to use the first is that we are going to use the same bridge uh, we have to use in, uh, uh, in iOS or it's called React Native Shared Widgets. So actually you don't read, uh, you don't need an, a native, external native model. You will have the ability to develop this by your own. And this actually requests that you have a, a basic knowledge of Java code because this will be mostly in Java that we go into do that. From React Native part, uh, there, are, there is nothing uh, actually can be done. That's why I'm really highlighting that you go back to check the, the previous video that I have uh, done for the iOS. This will give you more idea about how this will work. Uh, we are going to change to Android Studio. So this is one of the prequests that you need to have is that to have Android Studio, it will be more easy to, to run the uh, Android and then it will be, I guess, uh, faster also during the development. Android folder and Android Studio, the first thing we going to do is if you uh, have the right click here and you say new, then we're going to write down where we try to add a new widget and we did this will called app widgets and then you can call the class name for me it will be a converter and this is the class name and then where it will be placement and all of this you can yeah align all of this together but for me is that the default configuration will be enough then we hit the finish so this will actually create a class where it's called the converter monix and then with all the objects in it uh, we will not go through this first so I will just close this and then uh, it's for us that this will be enough to start the bridging first and then setting the data so if you click here and then try to create new Java class name and we were going to have bridging class where it's, it's called react native shared widgets so this is actually our our class here so the first thing is that we're going to extend this class from the React Native so context so we'll have the ability to include some classes, uh, some functions or methods that we can use. We have to identify the React context and then we have some constructor. This is mostly the Java code as I said where you uh, define your constructor and assign it to your variable and then uh, every uh, native widget should have this is a class name where you identify the actual uh, name, same what we have done for iOS. I think this is more what React Native opinions always to have. And then our method that we need to use. And in this case, this method should match the same what we have done in iOS. So it can be used actually, uh, it cannot be differentiated. It can be used both in Android and iOS at the same time with the same name, which means that uh, all the actual the arguments that you need to have here should be matched the same even if you don't use them. Now we define the shared preferences is actually when you want to access to, to the shared preference uh, storage of uh, Android and then uh, there are a couple things that uh, might be this is you get access to the edit which actually uh, puts the string uh, as a mapping of the data and then you commit this change. Now in order to access to converter mocks class now we have to make some intent uh, which means that this intent is actually setting what actually uh, we are doing. In this case, we are trying to update app widgets. And uh, so we go through all uh, the IDs in the app and we try to identify which ID that we want to use, the element that you need to pass the data to it. And in such a case, we are passing the IDs to, to the app widgets here with all these IDs as a, to the manage, uh, app widgets manager. So this will include all the app widgets. Now, uh, then we get the currency activity and we define that this to get the application context, uh, current activity, sorry, and then to get the application context of React and we're sending this as a broadcast. In order to use this React Native Bridge, we need to create another class with what we call 
React Native Shared Packager. We created a new file that's called React Native Shared Widget Packager. My, mainly will come with these classes and you don't really need to get to do that every time but this will be one time and then you have like the creative new managers this will have on the production area uh, with the react context and then we have here where we uh, create native models and then so here actually where we're going to import our react native shared widgets that the one that we created the class uh, here and then we pass the react context to it and now we are done with this we are only going to import um, instead of the react native share widget of class we import the packager inside the main application so if you take a look the main application will be mainly like this this is something I already created for you so you only need to add your new package uh, here and you just create and then you say packages add a new react native shared widgets packager uh, this is actually applies the same if you have external model that you want to add that is not auto linked and then you need to uh, link it here so this is place where also you can add it by the name and then you say yeah adding a new react native uh, well react native bridging so we have the bridge is already done now we're going to in explore a bit the design of uh, explore a bit actually the converter monix here so you see that if you go to the layout you will see that there is converter monix xml file this is actually the widgets and how you would like to uh, design it and how would you like to have uh, more data in it and all of that so this is require a bit of knowledge of let's say designing in android studio uh, but I, I won't go through that much uh, of it because it's mainly moving elements and then adding a new elements like a button or that you can already copy what I have done in, in the um, in my code when I finish this, but mainly is that if you want to add a new buttons, you have all the elements here, and then you just drag and drop, and then you call. So you see every time when you click on here, you have this ID which is identifier uh, for our elements and what you want to do for it. So for example, for the styling, you have all the styling here, but important is that this ID because now you can refer to the code by this ID by grabbing this ID and that's we will see when we develop the widgets the classes here in the converter monix so actually to give you more idea about what I have done is that I brought some text views and then uh, I add them to the screen where I have like every element uh, is styled and also every element has its own ID so you see this is very important because we will pass this data via this ID so this one's called from currency and then from value to currency and then to uh, value so this actually our ids you will see that there is also a configure converter so this is normally you don't need to do it every time but uh, uh, it's important to know uh, also that uh, when you click to add widgets you will have the ability to uh, call it whatever you want and that's will add it to you here there is also another file is called converter monix info uh, whatever you want to do uh, regarding this um, when you try to add uh, the description of the app widgets before you add it you have the like the preview and this will actually show you the minimum width the height and then what you want to call it and that's something uh, it will be going so uh, when you go to the strings uh, you will see that for example it will go to add strings app widgets description and then if you go to strings here and then it will say like okay what is the preview of this uh, widgets or like uh, the name uh, what do you want to have to have a description before the adding the widget is just a preview of it now we are done all of this let's uh, go to passing the data and converting the data and it will be the last step of it so we are back to our class with converter monix uh, here what we need to do is well we go through all the methods here all these methods actually you don't need it will be uh, by default uh, ready for you so you can take a look about, about this for example you have the event what happened what you want to do after uh, delete or what's happened will enabled or disabled but for us it's mainly just to update the widgets itself so here you can this will go through all the widgets and then try to update that specific one which is actually up widgets id and this as well be getting the uh, updating widgets here 
Now, in order to update these widgets, we are going to first get instance, and then we get this by calling the data, uh, by calling the ID or the data, actually. And this is uh, the same what we have done when we try to store the data. Now, the next thing is that we get the instance to get the string of converter monix. This is actually the ID that we have sent. For example, if you really remember that setting ID by converter monix, this is actually the, the converter monix ID. And then we need to have scheme, uh, let's say, because now we are passing the default values to, to our data. And this is actual scheme, so you don't need to think about, okay, this is the actual value. So no, it's not the actual value. This is kind of like the default, the fallback value. And uh, now we're trying to, to convert this uh, strings so we get the we convert this uh, to the data after using JSON objects and now we go to all the views in our let me close this so it means all the views in our converter monix xml which is actually passing the converter monix id so we need to get the layout and converter monix id and then we tell to uh, give me all the views there and now we need to take just one by one so actually uh, we just say like okay set text to view for this id which is as we said from currency and then we uh, take the widgets data here that come from a uh, string and we pass the from to it which is actually the currency euros do the same uh, for example for others so from value and then to currency and to value and in the end, we just call to update manager to update these widgets uh, with these views. We are only need uh, one thing that uh, the class that can define these widgets to be used. So no normally, when you have created the converter monix configure, is that uh, this will control the configuring other widgets. For example, so normally when you create this file, it will be created this uh, widget, and then you will have two files. Um, the one of them is that called converter monix configure activity. And that's basically, you don't need to do that much because it will be linked to it. So you can see that configuration screen is linked to the other one. And then it will come the, by default uh, linked to that uh, file. And then it will be like, for example, up widgets underscore, and then it will be followed by the name of our widget. So actually, if you go through this, it's mainly that you have a kind of configuring the widget's name, which is uh, I will show in the demo, but it's uh, more mainly that uh, you have the ability to rename your widgets, whatever you want. So you can have multiple uh, widgets with the, the same widgets, with the same, uh, with the different names. So, and that's actually the benefits of the, using this. Now you can get rid of it. You don't really need to use it all the time. But I would say this is very helpful that if you want to take a look how it works and then what's the meaning of setting this actually. This mainly just can be read and then you have full description of uh, on the top of it to understand what ex uh, exactly that uh, meaning. Is. So I would suggest that you run this not via the CLI or uh, yeah or uh, React Native. Try to run it from this uh, from the app where you have like to go select the emulator and then you click on run. And then let's see how it looks. Now, if I try to add a new, I will just say click on widgets. I will just go here and then search Monix. You will see our widgets and you can see how this will it looks. For example, for example, you will see it's very small and that's because we set the minimum. So you can set actually to get the maximum inside the strings file and then uh, the name, the description, as I said. And now if I click on it, I try to add this. It will open the configure uh, widgets, as I said, and I will call it, for example, Monix2 uh, because we have another one already. And then we add this. And now you have the ability to actually to uh, adjust this the size. So we'll go like this, for example, and like this. And this, it gets the same values because they are sharing the same um, storage. So it gets the same values even if you don't run the app. So that's actually uh, the benefit. And for example, if I open the app, the app looks like this, the React Native, and then we have the ability to uh, convert values uh, and then set all these uh, values. And uh, now let's just to try. So in just a few steps, we have learned how to develop a native Android widget using React Native, and uh, widgets are really powerful a tool for app developers, and they allow us to provide users with a quick access to important information and functionality. 
in the end and i would like to thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share and see you next time